third time. All right, let's see if that's streaming yet. It is now. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited by this. Um, <laughs> like this is my third time streaming, and this is the first. Time oh, I've... I'm so jell. You, you, your shirt is showing. My shirt is showing. Yeah. 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 So I wanted like, to show. Ta-da! My roll twenty or my uh, roll already T-shirt uh, arrived in the mail last week, <clears throat> which is an excellent way to introduce Eric from Roll Already. Wait, what? What? How that happened? Hi everybody. Uh my name obviously is Eric. Uh, uh so I do have a group uh called Roll Already. Uh it's a play on words if you look at my name inside of uh Roll of uh 20. It's Roll Adventure League ready. The whole idea behind our group uh, really was uh, I couldn't get my game, my my friends to play games enough, and they were the ones who made me play D anD D. And I got into it super late, and they had been playing it their whole lives, and it was very frustrating to not have people play who are the people who taught me. So uh, through investigation, through using Roll Twenty for please at least six years uh at this point i think um i found out about adventures league uh got really into that and uh if you don't know anything about that what we do at roll already is if you're not comfortable uh with playing openly in the pugs you know the pickup groups that you might find and things like that if you want to learn how to dm if you want to learn how just how to play if you got friends you want to get into it we're really really that that's our primary focus uh we're about 130 members strong and that's not because i've limited us uh or excuse me that's that's literally because i've limited us um i i want to have a good amount of dms versus players and uh anybody is more than welcome to come and join us we're also highly highly charity motivated uh stephanie can attest to the fact that i, I don't know if i told uh, Stephanie, actually, but I got an awful haircut after I shaved my head uh, <laughs> after everybody uh, donated a certain amount of money. It was bad. It was bad, bad. Uh, but um, we we do good things. We teach each other. We have fun, and it's a very good environment. Um, and if you ever have questions, please let let me know. And Eric, how much did you end up raising for uh, for the children's hospital with with that charity drive? Uh, not including the time invested where we went and volunteered, we uh, raised between cash and funds, and I'll mention their name again because they're actually rising in popularity, uh, North Star Games. Uh, their donation of 36 or 32 games, please uh, forgive my memory. Um, when I went to the Children's Hospital, it was about $2,500. Um, and awesome. that, Steph Stephanie can attest to, is from a very grassroots group of people um we I, we've pretty much doubled in size and we've managed it really well if you'd like to come play if you'd like to come learn if you'd like to come raise money please visit roll already um if you just want to shoot shoot the breeze just let me know and thank you stephanie yep thank you um so the uh, website for that is rollalready.com as eric mentioned and there is a facebook group as well but we post our um our games in there there's like a little forum on there that we that we post like the upcoming games and what's f kind of cool about this group is that uh we pretty much run games almost every weeknight uh so it's a uh, it's very exciting uh, I'm, I'm, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm very, uh, proud to be part of that group cause you guys are doing good, good stuff. So it, it's pretty crazy that you got in as early as you did, uh, <laughs> considering I was just like, ah, I'll get a bunch of people. Hey, uh, yeah. Hey Stephanie. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. We, we met at roll 20 con last summer and, uh, yeah. and, and that was kind of the, I think that was just about the kickoff, right? For you? Yeah, we did the, the, what was the mod? Con of Cons? Con of Cons. It was, that's such a great con game. All right, anyway, um, which, you know, anyway, so I have to, I have to run that again sometime soon. Um, <clears throat> it's my favorite newbie uh, module, I think. So, 
let us talk about DMing. This is the uh, my DMing workshop. Uh, my name is Stephanie. I do work for Roll20, but this is not an official Roll20 channel in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm very likely to fumble over my words quite a bit. I am very new at streaming. I used to do video blogging a lot, but this is sort of new territory for me, uh, doing this like live stream stuff. So please bear with me. Um, <clears throat> so those of you who are actually in uh, the World 20 game, I'm sure you can all see uh, sort of my landing page right now. Um, and we are going to, we're going to talk tonight about rolling the dice, which is, uh, which is a kind of a, it seems like a simple thing, but it actually turns out uh, rolling the dice can be sort of a, a strong question in um, uh, when you're when you're playing D and D or when you're DMing, especially. So we'll talk a little bit about that um, and uh, and kind of you know focus in on that, uh, and then we'll also talk uh, the roll twenty specific portion of the conversation tonight will be about using layers. Um, I am logged in as a free user, so I will not be showing off dynamic lighting. There won't be advanced fog of war on our layers. It's just going to be how do you use layers uh, as a free user. I really like f um, when I do these workshops to, to, to just cover things that uh, free users have access to since it's really intended for new, uh, for new GMs. So, um, <clears throat> and... Uh, hello to everybody who has joined just now on Twitch. Uh, yes, we have just started, and uh, I will remind you all that if you feel like you missed something, or if you have to like like you know take a bio break or something, and you come back and you're like, oh my gosh, I missed everything. Don't worry, this will be archived on the Twitch stream, so you can watch it as many times as you want and catch me saying really stupid things uh, if you need to. Thanks for uh, giving me a bathroom break. I'm going to take a hall pass and be right back. <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> so um, with that in mind, uh, let's get started talking about dice So and dice rolling. So the first thing I'm going to talk about has to do with uh, when you're GMing um, and we'll, we'll We'll narrow in on D and D and games that are similar to D and D, um, and then I'll talk a little more broadly about dice in other systems. So, so first off, um, when is a good time to roll the dice? And uh, Gary Gygax used to say that the the players roll the dice to see if they succeed or fail, and the GM rolls the dice to hear how they sound, uh, <laughs> which I think is not so far off uh, from when the GM really needs to roll the dice. Um, uh, a lot of GMs will, um, will roll the dice just for the effect of scaring their players uh, into, into heightening their tension. Not scaring their players like, like, you know, oh, I want my players to fear me, but rather they want to heighten the tension of what's going on. So... So one of the times when you roll the dice is I want my players to feel like something is about to happen that is scary or that is uh, that is tense. And a, like a really common thing is just, you know, you're at the table, you roll a d20. A lot of times you, you might roll it behind the, cur the, the, um, the screen or you might roll it openly. Um, if you're playing on D20 and you want to have this effect, you should roll it openly because otherwise the players will have no idea that you rolled a die. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so you roll the die and the players instantly want to know what is the meaning of that die roll, right? That's the, that's the first thing they're wondering is why did the DM just roll dice? Um, and if it's something like, like you know, oh... You're, yeah, exactly. Um, Fnor Prefect, roll some dice for unknown reasons. Exactly. So why did you roll the dice? And it might just be that you were rolling the dice, um, again, because you like the sound. Or it might be, oh, I want my players to worry that there's an ambush. You know, and then they're going to suddenly get more cautious and, and, you know, pay more attention and ask a lot of questions. As a DM, I love it when my players ask questions. I want them to ask me questions. I want them to ask questions like, you know, well, what's over there? What else is in this area? What kind of obstacles might I encounter? Because them asking those questions gives me an opportunity not only to, 
to give them answers, but to ask them for the answers as well. Oh, I don't know. Um, you might be in a in a clearing. Are you in a clearing? Oh, yeah, sure. Mm, okay. And then inevitably the rogue will ask, well, is there like some underbrush that I can hide in? Well, there is now. You know, <laughs> like, so that's one of the things that um, that I like to do is sort of put the scene dressing in as the players ask questions about the scene dressing. Um, can which, I just say something? Yeah. I, I, I had never thought of that. And that's actually a really uh, a different point of view looking at it because I had always been like, well, they're trying to create the environment that they want, but you see it from a point of view of give, you know, reward the creativity of creating that environment. Oh, absolutely. So uh, that that's pretty cool. No, I, I actually, that's, yeah. I like that. I, I have no problem letting the players set the scene um, with, with few exceptions. Uh, I, you know, if, if they say, oh, I want to duck behind a, a log here and there wasn't a log on the map, like I might say, oh, there's none there. Or I might just say, yeah, there's, there's definitely one there. Um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for, for those who are, uh, watching on the, on the Twitch stream, I guess you can see Fnord's, uh, chat too. Um, Fnord says, uh, he divides his roles by public and an attack role or something everyone would see. Um, a private, everyone knows you rolled, but only the GM knows the results and secret roles, which are like stealth, sleight of hand, <clears throat> if anything only the player and the GM would know happened. And those are, that's a really, that's a really clear distinction. Um, something like, uh, like my, that fake out role would, would be sort of like a semi-private role, right? Um, now, Fnord rolls the attack rolls publicly, and I do too. Um, I, I tend not to fudge my attack rolls in D&D. Um, much to my player's chagrin. And uh, we're currently running the Storm King's Thunder uh, module and um, all of the NPCs are set to roll secretly. They, they're set to roll with a, with a whisper to the GM. Uh, and I find it jarring because I'll roll the dice and I expect the players to respond to that. And then I remember, oh yeah, that's just, I only, I'm the only one who can see that. Um, so let's talk a little bit um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, that Storm King's Thunder, we went homebrew when season eight started. Um, we, we just okay. didn't, we didn't want to deal with the season eight rules. Uh, and so, yeah. So AJ asks the, per thank you. Thank you for leading into my very next thing that I wanted to say, which is how do you do a private role? Um, if you are a player, uh, and you guys can all try this. You type a slash in, in the chat, W for whisper, and then you can whisper the role to anyway, anyone. So I can whisper it to, um, to AJ. Uh, a, oh, I'm going to need to, A, no, I can't whisper it. I'm going to whisper it to Eric. Sorry, AJ. Whisper to Eric, uh, R, oh, this is just a whisper. Um, oh, I did it wrong. Uh, w R one D ten. Did that work? No, it didn't. Ah, uh, shoot. Hold on. I think. See, I just learned this this morning. Um, Fnor, do you use whisper rolls to players? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, right. thanks, so, Fnord. Uh, that didn't work. It's backslash. Oh. Is it backslash? Nope. Let me see if I could uh, grab the info. Thanks. Correct. Forward slash RD1D10. Uh, no, it's just sending RD10. I'd put the name in. All right. Um, oh, maybe it's Eric... <laughs> from oh wait hold on a yeah so it's slash w for uh -huh. whisper base uh -huh. 
the first word of the target's name. So Ulrich would be Ulrich the Great. Mm -hmm. You just type in Ulrich. Mm -hmm. And then a space mm -hmm. and then R one D twenty or whatever. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. No. I figured it out, I think. Nope. I keep telling I keep telling people R one D ten. It's not working. Uh Eric, I bet you did um uh whisper the GM role, right? I didn't whisper it. No. Uh, did you do G GM roll? I just did GM roll yeah. the way that I would if I was GMing. Right. Um, and that went to me. And nobody else, and right? Does I'd... anybody else see that roll? Did... Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I didn't see a roll from Eric. There you go. Yep. Okay. It's just GM roll. So that's that's to go to me, but for me to send it to someone else, I was trying to figure out how to do that. But uh, <clears throat> That's a secret. Okay, so um, so if I want to send a, a role, if I want to do a role that is completely secret, players don't see it, nobody sees it, um, as the GM, I can whisper to myself. Uh, so I'm basically talking to myself, which is kind of funny. Um, but then I would just do a GM whisper, so a GM role. So that's uh, slash uh, GM role, and then you type out whatever, whatever it is you want. Um, and as we just saw you there's two different ways that you can that you can have a role show up and one of them is uh you just do like the the context so it's like 1d20 plus three whatever the whatever your normal role would be and it'll output with um it'll show the the die plus the modifier the result and it'll give the total right uh you can also do gm role um Oh, uh, two square brackets, uh, 1d20 plus 3, close the brackets, and that gives you an uh, inline roll. Uh, inline rolls are a little bit uh, more streamlined, they're, um, and they're used a lot of times in, uh, like if you wanted to uh, send a whisper to the GM uh, where it's like whisper... Uh, or, yeah, whisper the GM. Um, uh, I am rolling my my dice on D twenty. Um, so, and I'll I'll do that without the whisper. Like that. So, so all of, so those of you in the in the chat can see it, uh, in the in the game can see it, um, and that that allows you to sort of you can sort of stack up you know like descriptions and things like if you wanted to you could have like this really long flowery thing and you know talk about you know, uh, how how I slide across the floor and 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 bring my blade around and then you like put the put the you know the die roll in the in the brackets and. And whatever else, um, I know a lot of the uh, play by text groups. Uh, sometimes that's that's kind of they kind of uh, enjoy that. Yeah, that's a good example. Like just thinking that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's there's some uh, that's that's kind of the basic. How do you build a, a die roll? There is a dice reference on the on the roll twenty wiki that if you want to um, if you want to like delve into all the ways that you can roll dice in roll 20 there are a ton like if you want exploding dice or you want uh dice that return the number of matches in the pool of dice um yes xander you can roll as many dice as you want uh, for example we can roll uh 100 d20s there you go that's 100 d20s right there um yeah uh, what is different? Um, yes, it is. It it is very different from from D and D on paper because you are you know basically you have to use a computer syntax to uh, to show the uh, the dice. <clears throat> Roll twenty also has three D dice. Um, I'm gonna see if they work. I know that sounds lame, but. Um, uh, doing that. Can I just mention something about uh, the comment of like uh, working off a of roll twenty versus coming from 
uh, tabletop, like yeah. physical tabletop. Mm -hmm. So, um, as somebody who was late to the game in comparison to a lot of people, um, if you're especially somebody who is not in the financial position to get a million different figurines, um, a, a million different assets, and, and everybody here uh, probably knows exactly what I'm talking about, a, a dragon that's worth $30, you know, stuff like that. Um, it's one of the things that is really helpful is that you can get the tokens that you need and they're either going to be free assets or uh, premium assets. And some of the premium, asset, premium assets out there are well worth it, especially the mods, yeah. which I'm not even going to touch. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So so I just showed off the 3D dice rolling. Um, so, for example, if you, uh, as the GM, you can enable the 3D dice in the in the game settings uh, and you can check the automatically roll them so if you want you want it to automatically roll if you don't check that um, and you roll the dice you're gonna get an interface that says click and drag to roll the dice okay so I can click and drag anywhere on the on the thing and it'll throw the dice that way it uses my this is so weird it uses the input from from my mouse to roll the dice and i i had this very long conversation because with um uh with the lead developer at roll 20 because i was like well how come 3d dice works you know like we have we have all these weird little bugs with it and the answer to that is what happens on this screen when you roll 3d dice actually impacts the result of the 3d dice so if you roll like a hundred 3d dice uh there's a that's one of the bugs that, that comes up is if you roll just a mess of dice and they're 3D, uh, they, you can count each one and they won't necessarily match up perfectly with the results and the output. But for the most part, <laughs> they do. Um, if, you, you know, if you're not rolling a hundred of them. Um, all right, so that's 3D dice, which is totally slick and super fun. Um, and when you click on the, on the screen, they, they go away. Uh, so they don't they don't stay put. Um, I know one of the often yeah exactly. If you throw a hundred d twenties on your keyboard, right, you might have some errors. Um, one of the often requested features has been uh, more customizable three D dice. Some people want to have like a dice tower uh, or like a, a dice box so the three D dice will stick around. Uh, these are these are all things that have come up on the suggestions forum. I think they're all like really cool ideas, and I hope someday we can do them. Um, so that's uh, that's the basics of of dice rolling. Like I said, I there's the dice syntax is you know there's exploding dice, there's matching dice, there's uh, drop this kind of dice. There's only count dice that are uh, that that hit a six or above or something like that. Um, so, so there's a whole bunch of different kinds of, of dice rolls that you can put together and they can be put together, not just in dice rolls, but also in macros. And I'm going to talk a little bit about those, um, because we talked about, um, so I'm going to say this is my attack and damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now we talked a little bit about how do you make a dice roll, right? Like just a basic, you know, it's like, like slash roll d 1d20, right? So roll 1d20 and say I've got a plus three on my, on my thing. Um, let's say me swings her sword like a boss. Roll one D, then roll 1d6 plus three because that's my damage. I'm going to test that. I swing my sword like a boss, rolling, here's my roll, there's my thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, she, let's see, uh, and I could do, I can do it like this if I want. I hate to kind of interrupt and everything, but I want to go back to the subject of fudging dice. The only time I would do that if, say, like rolling for encounters if i have like a party of level ones and i roll like a dragon i'm mm. gonna fudge that dice sure sure um 
I mean, one might ask, why do you have a dragon on a table of, of random encounters for a group of level ones? Um, I put it at the, like, a 100 or step. Yeah. Level. That's not gonna, that's only happened to me once. Yeah. And, and what's an interesting question there is, you know, okay, so why, why was that on that table to begin with? And maybe it was the Gibbs at, the far outlier. And then one of the things you can, Fnord, Fnord beat me to it. I was gonna, I was gonna put the, um, the inline rolls in there. Um, uh, rolls a, um, and does roll as fast. I want to say a thing. Well, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm still in the middle I of know, that thought. I know. Okay. That's why I'm being quiet. <laughs> okay, so there we go. All right. Um, so yeah, there's value to the players learning to run away. Uh, one of the things that I would do as a GM, if something like that happened and it did, um, last week in my weekly group or two weeks ago in my weekly group. Um, I, I, I had two dragons in their fight. Um, one oh of them God. was, yeah, one there, uh, the play, the PCs are eighth level and one of them was a young red dragon. And it, that was a random encounter. And it was a random encounter that could probably have, they almost certainly could have beaten. They they're eighth level and they're pretty powerful. The other dragon showed up because they have just stolen part of a uh, dragon horde. <clears throat> and this was the dragon that it belonged to. And that happened during a week that I wasn't there. And when I came back and I found out that they had basically looted like, like 20,000 gold pieces, I was like, hmm. Well, I'm going to make that have consequences. So let's give them some consequences for that. Um, they still get to keep the gold, but you know, there has to be, they have to feel something. Uh, so as they're fighting this red dragon and one of them is trying to kind of sneak back so that, cause she's the rogue. So she's sneaking away so that she can kind of, you know, get a better position. And she comes out to the edge of the fog cloud. And I said, yeah, there's something on like right there that has been sneaking up on you, and of and course, just like a dragon. And of course, it was a much older uh, white dragon that was ready to uh, chomp them. Uh, at that point, I mean, this could have just turned into a TPK in in a, in a heartbeat. Yeah, exactly. How but old was that dragon? But this ancient dragon does oh, not God. care about these these puny uh, humanoids because it doesn't realize that they are the ones who stole its horde. Why, like, how is it possible that something so small and weak could have stolen part of my horde? It must be the other dragon there that did it. And so this other dragon enters the fight, but starts out by attacking the dragon that they'd been fighting. And so, and so one of the things that can happen and that, that if you have that kind of scenario where you're looking at your at your dice rolls and you're like, oh my god, this is just going to kill them where they are, uh, you just you can just make that that opponent's motivations not be to kill the the PCs, right? It 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 could just it could just be oh we saw a dragon it flew by it was on its way somewhere else that's the encounter um <laughs> exactly that's what i did and then like much later in the campaign like almost at the end of it it was like oh hey we finally defeated that i can't remember if it was like a lich or something and then yeah. just all the, that, all the no, way but that's around. really smart that 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 good good on you for doing them all the way back to town through a desert just they stumble upon an oasis and there just out in the open and just there right right yeah um yes exactly you can you can um as you said you can you can fudge your dice uh in those times or you can take that you can take what you what what your dice told you as a guideline of what actually happens so um so that's a uh uh yes uh, aj asked if you can import maps that you've downloaded elsewhere you absolutely can and uh, and we will cover that in a in a minute uh when we talk about layers um so so yeah i i don't fudge dice very often um and i don't fudge dice very often because most of the time 
if I roll on a table or something and it's something that I either don't think the players uh, would survive, the PCs would survive, or I don't think the players would enjoy it, or I wouldn't enjoy it. Um, That's very important. Uh, if, you know, I don't, I don't like every kind of combat or encounter that I can, that I can run in D&D. &D. Uh, and some of the encounters that are in, like, the published modules or whatever, they're, I find them, I find them lackluster in some cases. Uh, in some cases, it's a repeat of another result. I rolled, I rolled for them to encounter a sea hag twice in Tomb of Annihilation. And the first time I ran it, and it almost killed the whole party. Uh, it was great. It was it was phenomenal. <laughs> like like she she dropped the unkillable uh, were tiger character in like one round and terrified the rest of the PCs because they were like second level. Um, fantastic encounter, right? They barely they barely <laughs> clawed away with their lives. Yes. It was great. I, I have one question. How do you have an unkillable were tiger at second level? Uh, that's um, that's in Tomb of Annihilation. It's a it's a um, it's a guide that they can pick up that they can hire. So I, I haven't played that module. Yeah, so it's it's it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's one of the it's one of the guides that they can that they can meet. Um, but then, so after they've they've barely clawed their way away from this character from this monster and everything, and they killed her and and everything and 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 they've survived. And then the next, like, like two days later, uh, I, I roll on the random encounters table again, and I get another sea hag. And I was like, oh, my God, they're going to be so bored uh, if I just keep throwing. This is, like, this is like you just keep throwing the same kinds of monsters over and over. Um, so what I had done in the first encounter was, first of all, I'd made it terrifying because they almost died. And second, I'd made it terrifying because of the way that I role played the sea hag, which was, which was that they heard someone crying in the, in the like underbrush nearby, please help me, please help. And so when I rolled the second one, I, I said, Please help me, please help. And instantly they all said, nope, we're out of here. We're going the other way. <laughs> um, so, so sometimes the, the, the idea is that you just, you just kind of, you, you, you can, you can, I could fudge the dice, but mostly I just didn't want them to do that fight. And so I tried to make sure that it sounded exactly like the previous one so that they would, they would just like run away. Yeah, that um, happened. Yeah. Uh, okay. AJ asked who's the youngest person I've ever played with. Uh, I have played with a seven year old. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not sure if I've played with anyone much younger. I've played with, I've played with kids that were younger, but we didn't play D and D we played other role playing games. So, um, yes, please help. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, so you fudge the dice for, for things like that. Um, I have fudged the dice once in a while where it was just a really like bad dice luck and it could kill PCs who were otherwise playing smart. I don't mind killing PCs if they're playing dumb, uh, but I feel, yeah. and, and I don't mind killing them in a big epic fight with the big bad. I feel like if you are in a fight with the lich and you die, it's an honorable death. But if you yeah, just yeah, this is like the final thing of the campaign. Yeah, if you, you just worked your way up to everything. Yeah, if you just got a string of bad luck against the orc chieftain, yeah, you know, I feel bad about those, and and I just kind of, I just kind of scale back. So one of the things that people don't appreciate is the possibility and the likelihood of the death of your character, yeah. and there's. There's actually not a lot wrong with that character dying if if you can think of it as a full life. Like, think of all the things you did as this person. Yeah. Think of the way that they went out. Like, I, I actually had a conversation with somebody the other day, and they're like, what are you going to do if X dies? And he's, he's like my main. And I'm like, I hope he goes out gloriously and Bard sing his songs, you know? Like, it, it, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to happen. If if there was no danger, would you play? Exactly. If, if there's no danger, does it feel like an epic story? 
and uh, and sometimes you're not playing an epic story, and that's fine. But in D and D, I'm always playing an epic story, so I I always want to have that feeling of of something big and momentous. Um, exactly. Exactly. So I want to switch over to talking about layers because we've got a couple questions on that, and uh, I think that's um, <clears throat> and that's that's terrific. I, I, I like this. Um, I just I just looked over at the Twitch chat and Riviac says to tell Eric he sounds like a nerd. Thanks. Hey, a uh, lot. Rory. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi. Is that Riv- is Riviac Rory? Yeah, it it is Rory, and he knows that I already told him I have uh, a face for radio <laughs> and a voice for silent film. All right, so um, so I've switched us over on the map to the um, to a little map that I've put out. Um, this is something that I just I just dragged it together in about five minutes. Um, I think everyone who is currently in the the Roll Twenty game, uh, except it looks like Marcus probably doesn't have. So I'm going to throw one on here for Marcus. <clears throat> I uh, I don't think I have one. Yeah, you don't have one. All right. So, I, uh, not Marcus. Oh, who is that? Um, Carlos M. Oh, Carlos M. Let me throw a, let me throw a token on there for Carlos. Thank you. Yep. I like the map. Where are we? Ooh, give me a hot one. I did. All right. So, um, everyone should have a token that they can that they can move. Um, and I didn't. I didn't set up anybody's uh, uh, token to have a, uh, a character sheet associated with it or anything. Just just threw some tokens out there. Um, so go ahead and uh, if you need to, you can like drag to find which one is yours, uh, and then um, and then move it around. You can you can change its uh, its status icons if you need to uh, or or want to just to just to see it. Okay. Um, all right. So, and everyone should, if you're if you're if you're in the game, you should really only be able to see, uh, pretty much, pretty much inside that box, right? Is that true? Just yeah, one yeah. room. All right. That's true. Okay. Cool. Uh, you can move out of that box, but you could probably can't see anything when you do, right? No, I can't see anything out yeah. of this box. Okay. Uh, yes, each square is five feet in this map. So I'm going to show off my uh, page settings. So this page is 25 squares by 25 squares, and one square equals five feet. And we set that in the page settings. Um, there's a grid, which is a size of one square. So that would be five by five, you know, five feet by five feet. Uh, in my case, I made it square. You can set it as a hex if you want to. Um, usually people do those for games that are based on hexes or games that are, um, like a, a big overland map might be hex. And in this case, the map that I'm using for the background already had lines on it. So I decided to make the, the color, uh, transparent, but I'm going to put, turn the color back on so that you guys can see those lines and really quick I'm going to switch to my map and background layer and you do that with the the menu that's just below the the pointer icon um, you can also use the shortcut key control O for the token layer control M to select the the map layer and control K to select the GM layer and I'll get into those other two layers in a minute. But to, con- to select the map layer, I could have just used the keyboard shortcut, Control-M. That's pretty awesome. Isn't that uh, cool? Aren't you happy that, that you came to this workshop? Um, now, I can re- I'm reconsidering it. No, I can re- now, I can resize this the background map pretty easily just by dragging to resize it, right? Uh, and if I, if I size it perfectly then my lines should all should all line up but clearly i didn't whoops clearly i didn't size it perfectly because they don't they don't all line up so what am i gonna do i mean this is a lot of fiddling 
How about if instead of fiddling around a lot, I'm going to right click on my map that goes in the background and I'm going to select Align to Grid. Uh, this is a fantastic tool because what I can do with this is now I'm going to take, I'm going to put my crosshairs on one corner of my, my, my map image, not the grid itself, right? And I'm going to drag it to a 3 by 3 square. Uh, I'm going to try again because that wasn't quite perfect. Hmm, I'm going to say it's 72 by 72. Okay. And now, should be pretty close. Nope, it didn't do it. Didn't do it right. I didn't do it right. It's close though. Find a grid. You know what would help is if I zoom way in. Okay. And then if I line it right up, you know what? It keeps snapping to the grid, but I can fix that by pressing and holding the Alt key while I move it. Um, <clears throat> so, having done that, you can see it's a little off on the edge, but it's pretty close in the rest of the map. Um, and this is the point where I hide the grid. I make it transparent. And the reason I make it transparent is, again, I already had lines, and I don't really want to uh, have those lines um, uh you know, showing up and overlapping. All right. <clears throat> so, whew, that was just the map layer. Oh, don't, don't nudge around. Um, some other things you can do with the map layer, say I want to add something to the foreground in the map layer. I'm going to go take a look here. Some of my assets. Um, oh, Grey Tails Tavern Pack. All right, sure. I got a bench. I'm going to add a bench. Put a bench there. Um, let's say I want to put this cup on the bench. Oh, that ended up being pretty big, so I can click and drag to make it smaller. But if you've ever tried to do that and it keeps popping back to be the same size, hold the Alt key before you release the, the mouse button. Um, so the Alt key is sort of our, our, our one stop, I want it to be exactly here button. Um, yes, Alt and mouse move is your best friend in this case. Um, yeah, very helpful. Uh, you can also do things, uh, sorry, keep, keep accidentally dragging that. Uh, you can right click and if I wanted to move this above everything, I can do that and now it's above the... Uh, the cup. Um, if I want to move it all the way to the back, I can. And if I do that, I'm like, oh, I moved it all the way behind the floor. I can just move it around. So those are um, some very, <laughs> very uh, simple kind of ways to, um, to move the map around. All right. So Anybody having questions about just the map layer? I remember there was a question earlier about can I upload things like maps that I have from, that I've downloaded elsewhere. And I will show you guys how to do that real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to drag the player token over, but there's, there's not a whole lot to see because I'm, I'm just dragging something in. Um, let me see here. Let me grab a... <clears throat> Oh, I can't use that one. Hmm. Um, gaming. All right. So this is a map that I uh, that I have from uh, from a module from from a D and D module. Uh, it's actually from an Adventures League module, 
and I drag and I drop it onto the desktop and Roll20 will give me an, up, an uploading thing and there it is. Now again, I can, this one already has a, a grid as well. So I could use the Align to Grid tool and, and line it all up. But as you can see, I can just, I can just drag, it, drag it right in. And it will show up when I go to the, the, um, the library. It'll show up here in my recent uploads. So I can just drag things in as I need them. Um, <clears throat> so very, very handy if you've got a library of maps or if you bought things on, like sometimes on drive through if you buy a module, sometimes they'll, they'll include the maps as graphics. And uh, sometimes they're doing that just so that you can use them on virtual tabletops. Like they'll, they'll be really clear about it. I have a few maps that I've gotten as um, as stretch goals and Kickstarters. They're like, oh well, if you you know do our Kickstarter, you'll also get the maps. Like, great, awesome, you know. And then I get the maps and I can use them for whatever I want. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Uh, and if you make your own maps using like Campaign Cartographer or any other map making tool or even just Photoshop, you can drag them in. Um, and as of this week, your maps can be animated. Uh, so you could just you could just drag in your video of whatever and and drop it on there. Uh, the caveat on that, of course, is is your upload size is limited to 10 megabytes, and you might be sitting there for three days waiting for it to finish uploading and converting. But it can be done. <laughs> it so. can be done, but consider is it an asset to your map? Or scenario where yes. you're willing to let it yes. bog down but, those with a lesser computer. But our our animation gets converted to a WebM file, so it ends up being a lot smaller uh, in terms of what gets actually delivered to the other players. So it will bog down eventually, but if you only have a few of them or you reuse your assets. Uh, it won't it won't be as bad as as if you you know have a, a gazillion full video maps. Um, I I think when we were when we were researching this and testing it, we found somebody who had put the entirety of the Terminator in a GIF. Uh, I, we were like, why why would you do that? But you know what, people do all kinds of things. So um, <laughs> do do what you're gonna do. Uh, <laughs> that's the wrong question. The question is, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's the map layer. I'm going to drag us back over to, uh, where I had things already set up. Um, <clears throat> so that's the map layer. Here we are back in our, in our nifty purple map that we've, that we're working on. Um, and, uh, now I want to go to the, uh, the object and token layer. So I'm going to control O and I'm back to seeing all of your uh, happy faces. So this map has fog of war turned on and uh, it does not have advanced fog of war because we don't, I'm a free player, so I don't have that app. Uh, I don't have that as an option. Um, but from here I can reveal areas, I can polygon reveal, and I can hide areas. So I'm going to show the polygon reveal. The polygon reveal is basically I'm going to take my my cursor, my mouse, and you can tell I'm old, and just draw a bunch of lines, um, and it's just one click per per point that I'm that I'm making. And when I when I get to the point where where I want it to to finish revealing, I just right click, and suddenly it reveals that area. Cool, right? What if I do? Uh, wait, Copperfield, one more time. <laughs> one more time. Okay, I'll reset the fog so I can show you again. So I'm going to use the polygon reveal. So with the polygon reveal, I just uh, click in, kind of making an outline of whatever it is that I want to show off with my with my fog of war. Yo, and when I'm that done, is awesome. When I'm done, I right click it and it opens. Now, 
Snort says, try using hide areas. That was my next thing. Uh, so with so with reveal areas, reveal areas will normally do just a square, right? Just boop. All right. If I want to hide areas, I also use a square. Boop. You should all be in darkness now. Uh, we do have a bug that we're going to fix where the hide areas sort of does this weird overlapping thing, and I can make like 5,000 really dark, dark areas, but I don't need to. Then I can reset the fog if I just want it to be back to normal. Uh, and and that's that's like the the basics, right? Um, so very very simple, very straightforward. Uh, one of the questions I had today was if you have Advanced Fog of War turned on, Advanced Fog of War automatically shows you uh, whatever you would be able to see uh, based on your light source and dynamic lighting blocking anything. Uh, kind of we we call it sort of the uh, like the the World of Warcraft version where you're just kind of like tramping through whatever. Um, <clears throat> and you can use Advanced Fog of War and Fog of War at the same time. So if you're like, if you're like, oh, my players keep running on ahead and I don't want them to see what's going on in that area before they get there, you could drop a, you can drop a hide areas there. And even if they tramp ahead, they won't reveal it. Um, if you have a like, an area of darkness, like somebody has has cloud of darkness or they used a darkness spell, you could use hide areas so that even if they have a light source and they walk into it, they still can't see. So, Can I ask a good question? Uh, as a DM to DM uh, slate mm -hmm. uh, back up on the actual functionality of Roll20, what do you, how, how are you dealing with pacing? How are you dealing with people moving forward? Because I, I have some groups, they move together, they're, they're the A team. And then I have other groups where I got five people who are the A team. And then the B team is that one guy who wants to fly ahead. Sure. Um, it's a social problem. You, you, you need to set the expectation with the player that they're not going to do that. Oh, then I'm already doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, All it really, well. <laughs> really it's, a, it's a social problem because that player is the one who is, um, is, is behaving in a way that you don't want them to. And, you know, there, for one thing, I could just say, okay, I'm going to take away control of your token. And, and that's really easy. You just double click their token and, and delete the controlled by thing. Super easy to do. Um, yeah. You can also, if they move around, so uh, Eric, go ahead and move your token. I have a token? Oh have a token. my goodness. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I, I don't I have, have no a token. Idea. You don't have a token? All right, I'll give you, I'll give you Ethan's token. Because... I thought we were friends, but you know. Well, you know. Things change okay. fast. All right, so this blue-haired <laughs> blue person up here, that's you now. Uh, look at me go. Okay, what do I do? So drag, okay, so drag yourself, drag yourself, drag yourself wherever you're going to go. Like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, you know what? I, I want you to not be there. Stop doing that. So I'm just going to grab your token, and I'm going to put it where I want it. You can still pick it up and move it. But I, then I can see just, where I can just pick it back up and put it where I, where I want it. And I have done that. I've done that. So in... You're talking about using the combination of the darkness that you set up and being like, nope. Yep. Get back. Now, if I had dynamic lighting turned on, uh, if I if I had that as an option, if I were a pro user and I had dynamic lighting, and I set up uh, the option of okay, here's my dynamic lighting going, and um, and what I'm going to do is uh, restrict movement for dynamic lighting lines. So in that case, and th this is this is getting a little bit a little bit off topic here. Uh, in that case, they would only be able to stay within the lines of the dynamic lighting. And if I really wanted that person to stop moving forward, I can drop into the dynamic lighting layer and just draw a line across the, the path that he's trying to go down. And then he's going to stop. Um, but that's a little heavy handed for something that could just be resolved with, okay, hey, dude, don't move your token yet. Um, you would be surprised. I, and just from experience, because I use, like, it's almost like uh, in... I know there's a good portion of my 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 user base watching and stuff like that, but I use the term freeze. It's yeah. just like 
red light, green light, one, two, three, when you're a kid, like mm -hmm. people still move tokens. It doesn't uh -huh. matter if you say freeze, yep. like it, uh, but so you're not being heavy handed. You, I, I think you're doing the right thing by doing what you're doing. Yeah. I, I usually don't need to, uh, to, to go to that extreme, but that tool is, it, it is an option if, if, uh, if I need it. Um, again, that, again, that tool is only available if you, uh, are a pro user and have dynamic lighting on though. So if you're not, and you don't have dynamic lighting turned on your map, then your best option is to tell the person, Hey, stop moving your token and drag it back to where you need it. You know, um, I, I if you really want to, to, to do it, the, like you really want to like have some consequences for that. Um, I have this habit of having the players create traps. Um, I do this in Dungeon World. People will search for traps in Dungeon World and they will find them uh, because they searched <laughs> for them. There wasn't a trap before they looked. Uh, if you're going off on your own, there's probably going to be a trap now. Uh, so that is my... That's, that's fun, that's especially my, for the the skill monkeys out it, there. It really is. It really is. And and in some ways that becomes, uh, it may be something that self-reinforces if they're the kind of player who's like, hey, I want to go out and find traps and that's why I'm moving on ahead. All right, cool. Like, then that's what happens. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's one of the ways that I have dealt with that issue. Um, and hey, if that makes it more fun for everybody, that's that's cool. Um, Speaking of traps, for a second, yeah, I had one. I had my one game. It was like my second or third game ever, uh, being DM. And I had a player who had to make a dexterity check for like I think it was like not falling down a set of stairs. Mm -hmm. And he falls downstairs, of course, into a trap, of course. Another one, and he just dies. Because he had like two HP left after that fall down the stairs. That's um, that's pretty rough. Yeah, it happens sometimes. It it happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, really I, depends on how you want to run your game and how you defined it before. I mean, I I was like, uh, I I told them before there will be traps around almost every corner. They're sure. like, okay, there you yep. go. So they were warned. All right. Um, so I just I just revealed the area just north of uh, Eric's token in this little um, this little uh, alcove here. So I'm 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 pinging that by the way. And for those of you who uh, haven't been a DM on Roll Twenty, you can shift and click. So pinging is you shift uh, you uh, click and hold the mouse button left mouse button and if you shift uh, hold the shift key while you do it as a dm it will center everybody's view into that uh particular spot um all right so you guys are all running ahead and those of you who are looking on the twitch stream probably already see what's wrong with that and that is the gm info overlay so i'm going to hop over to there right now because on that overlay i have a bunch of monsters and I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to put them on the token layer. Ha ha! You've been ambushed. You animal. <laughs> um, and then I, you know, jump back over to the to objects and tokens, and I say, "Okay, Eric, you moved too far ahead because you ended up right in front of the orc, and now they're going to attack you." I want to argue for the next five minutes about it and pull out a lot of books to support my idea. To support your your argument. You huh. rules lawyer. Like any good player should. Like any good player should. I disagree, depending <laughs> on the pacing. <laughs> so, but yeah, here here it is. Like like that's uh that is like at at the most bare bones, here is the GM info uh overlay. So um I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna move them back over to that layer. So the way that I access that layer is again through the menu, uh the layers menu. Or I can uh, press Control K, and that will move me to that layer immediately. Uh, it's you know the keyboard shortcuts. Are uh, the uh, shortcuts available if you hover over them, like within the UI? No, um, the these are keyboard shortcuts. So no, I, I hear you. No, yeah, so uh, there's yeah, so instead um, there's a reference on the wiki. Uh, there's also advanced keyboard shortcuts, which you can select as an option. 
in the page settings. And when you do that, uh, is you don't have to do control O to get to the token layer. It's just O. Um, so yeah. All right. So here I am in my, in my layer, in my, uh, uh, oh, right. That's going to be over here. A lot of, it's a lot of dice, my friend. That is a lot of dice. Okay, so um, this is my GM, uh, my GM token, uh, piece of information, whatever. And you'll notice these are pretty light on the GM layer. Um, as of this week, and we're doing a hot fix tomorrow to to make this we to make this available for free users as well, because there was a there was a setting that got disabled accidentally. Um, but as of this week, you will be able to, there's a little slider beneath this, uh, the GM info overlay um, selection on the menu, and you can select how, how uh, opaque they are, or how transparent. So, but for right now, they're pretty faint, it's hard to see them. Uh, they work just like any other token. You can move them around uh, if you want to. It's just like it's just like any other part of the uh, of like of the token layer. If I want to make like this, this is where the ambush is. I can make a note. I'll make that. Uh, I'll make that like yellow so I can actually see it. Right. Um, so, so that's like a note on the GM layer. And when I go to the object and token layer, I can still see that note, but I won't accidentally select it when I'm, when I'm selecting everybody's tokens. Um, to move the tokens from the GM layer to the token layer, you just right click them. You can select all of them and right click them, or you can just select some of them or just one and select layer token layer. And then they go to the token layer and now everybody can see them and everybody can say, oh my God, there's, there's orcs and goblins run. Or there's like nine of you. So more like, oh my God, there's orcs and goblins, kill them and take their stuff. Um, uh, so one second of, option, please. <laughs> right. Uh, and then of course, once you have moved your tokens to the token layer like from the gm layer to the token layer don't forget to go back over here and go back to the object and token layer because otherwise you're going to be like clicking around and be like why can't i select my orcs to have them move and the the answer is because you weren't on the right layer um probably one of my one of my biggest like <laughs> things that i that the two things i keep forgetting to do is i forget to move the player ribbon uh, in the page bar, right? And I forget to uh, go back to the right layer when I've moved tokens around. So that's kind of one of my, my personal things. Uh, players, of course, it's easier for players. They only ever really have access to the objects and tokens layer. So for a player, the only layer that you ever interface with is objects and tokens. So that's kind of, it's a, it's a good thing to know. Um, so that's the basics of layers too. Uh, are there any any particular questions about that? Um, no, the, I learned more than I thought. I would okay. like in the sense of like somebody who ran so many damn games. Like I should have kno known three of the things you said. <laughs> uh, some of these things I learned today. Uh, because I had to go through the tutorial today, which um, went okay. So I I was when when Roll Twenty was being kickstarted, I was a backer, at, like way back then. Um, you fool! Yeah, and uh, like I, I I was in as soon as I got my invitation to join. So I started with Roll Twenty before there was a tutorial, and today I had to go through the tutorial because we were fixing something on it. I was like, "Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that either." So, <laughs> so I learned something new about this platform almost every single day, um, which is which is great. But it's a good thing. No, yeah, it is a good thing. I sound like Martha Stewart. It's a good. Thing. It's a good thing. Um. All right. Uh, any other questions that anybody has? If you're if you're watching on the Twitch and you want to uh, and you want to throw a question in, I do have that chat open uh, that I can see. 
um, if you're in Discord, uh, I'm I'm watching the general channel. So, and of course, if you're in the Roll Twenty game, I can see that chat as well. Um, knowledge overload, overload. Yeah, Marcus, there's, there is a lot of there's a lot of knowledge in here. Um, the uh as i mentioned when we started the twitch stream does have uh vod so like later on if you want to if you want to watch it again you are more than welcome to and there are two other um uh uh two other um uh, videos that i've done before um do you have to buy the little virtual figurines no um you don't you some of them you can get uh for free uh, it, like you can upload your own. So, uh, here, I, I'm going to show you guys and I, for, forgive me, whoever's this is, it's a totally cool animation and I found it on the internet and I feel bad cause it's going to be the cat playing the piano. I, yeah. you, you wish. No, no, this is, <laughs> this is a great token that I found and I, I kind of want to meet whoever made this one. So I just, I found this on the internet. Oh, that, that's cool. <laughs> right? Um, well, I love this. I, this is like the fourth time I've seen it and I love it. I know, I know. I, why is it only the, we put this out, we put this out yesterday. How is this only the fourth time you've seen Oh, you've been working. All right. Um, so yeah, like. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, like you can, you can put like any, any token on here. Um, and, and we like, we don't, we don't care. You want, you want your token to be like, like an anime character from, from your favorite anime, go for it. Uh, you're not selling those tokens. So it's, it's your, you know, it's, it's as if you used that as your picture for your table game at home, right? Is the idea. So if it's something that you would be able to do in your living room at home, we support it. Uh, you can even see if I search for something, like I search for uh, warrior. Uh, no, not in. I want to search in. Just uh, there. There will be. I'll get. I'll get from my library. I'll get marketplace. I'll get premium. So, like I could. I could buy some of these from here, but also I'll get ones from the web. Yeah. 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 We'll. We'll put. We'll put web things up here. And then you just drag it in. And it's uh, not just so you guys know, not just with tokens of like players and stuff like that. But uh, Stephanie, if you want to show uh, one of the examples was uh, Rory uh, Riviak, who's in the uh, chat mocking me. Uh, he, I gave him the opportunity to be the architect to my guild. So go ahead and uh, type bar or uh, if you were trying to build some type of bar, I, I, I got a guild hall from Chen from PAX. And there's there's a bunch of different options uh, that are free. Uh, if you want to go into premium, you could totally yep. uh, delve into some of the stuff that people have said. But you got a million different op options. To yeah, and and you can see like these web searches. The, I mean, these aren't these aren't designed for me to turn them into maps here, but I have absolutely used uh, this style. You know, this uh, this perspective in in games where I don't want a map, I want a set piece, mm -hmm. you know, player where, of the mind type. Thing. Yeah. Uh, theater yeah. of the mind or, or even, theater um, like some of the games that I, that I run, that's just the way that they, you know, that they don't even do a, a grid, um, type wood, to find wood floors. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. For the web search is it, it's not, it's not terrific. Um, it's not Google that's for sure. Uh, but again, like you could use Google, and then download the picture and upload it yourself. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing stopping uh, players from doing that. And um, the the biggest the, the biggest thing stopping it is you do have a disc quota. There is a limit to how much uh, you can actually upload. Um, uh, but if you find yourself like, oh, I've put too much stuff up here, then you just go into recent uploads uh, and click it, and you can. You can delete, uh, I'm not going to delete the role already. I, I would never do that. Um, but you can delete, you know, uh, like things that you, that you don't use or you don't want like this 
warning dot gifs that I don't even doesn't it doesn't even show up. Or I've got a duplicate here. I don't need that duplicate, so I can delete that. So uh, and it shows that I'm using two megabytes of a hundred because uh, I'm a free user. So you know, you try to try to find small files. Uh, try to if you're using animations, use WebMs. They're usually smaller, uh, just as a as a general guideline. Um, stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. There's some there's some really there's some really cool stuff you can do just just with free stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, any any other any other questions for me about all of this? Um, do you guys? I I can I can switch over and I'd ask all of you who are in the Roll Twenty game to switch over to uh, uh, to the um, to the Twitch stream for a second if you guys want to see some of the cool things that are on the marketplace. I, I just thought of something. It's mm -hmm. what one of my friends asked me. It's like a long time ago when, when I like after my, after like my first like ten games of D and D. Mm -hmm. What's your least favorite favorite kind of player you see at the table? Uh, or my least favorite player yeah. that I will see at a table is um, <sighs> players who who center the entire game on themselves and do so at the expense of other players. Uh, if you're not actively trying to make the game more fun for everybody, not just yourself, um, th then I, I feel like you've missed the spirit of D&D. &D. Uh, exactly. That said, I mean, there's, it's, it's cool to want to feel like a big damn hero. And it's, 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 as a GM, one of my goals is to make everybody feel like they have at least one really awesome spotlight moment, at least. Exactly. But for me, it's got to be like those whiny players, like, nya, 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 why, do I, why don't I have enough magic items? Or, you know. Right. It, and then I ask, you know, well, what is it that they are really feeling there? And a lot of times what they're feeling is they're feeling underpowered or they've turned the game into, com into a competition with another player. Uh, sometimes like oh he's got he's got this and I don't um, and then I, I you know try to evaluate like is that is that fair like is that are they making a fair critique have I have has one player uh, gotten more loot than everybody else and if so why and also you know I'm sorry yeah no it's cool um what one of the things I mean you you're you it sounds like you're learning and that that that's awesome or at least you're you're progressing you, you you it sounds like you got to start at an age that you're getting like a 15 year start on me but what what's really cool about it is you're asking these questions and it's important and as long as you like the people that are playing at the table you you you're going to come up with something to the story that is going to make them feel more important, more uh, uh, a part of the the thread of what holds the whole story together. So you're 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 on the right path. And yeah, you know when you say you're like, oh, I hate this kind of person, brother. I I deal with over a hundred different people, and they all have different person personality types and. Yeah. You 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 learn that as long as they're a good person, there is somebody that you like playing with. You as as the dungeon master, you're you're gonna figure it out. Yep. One thing I would say, if I if I could, um, I, I would also give an example of my last game last Sunday. Uh, you, you're gonna sometimes think, you know, this player is being annoying and this player is being whiny or something like that. But I give you a perfect example. I. I had a kind of moment like that last Sunday in Eric and Testify, and I, 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 you know, got a little, I almost got a little angry, but, you know, uh, in the end, I started thinking about it, and I thought, you know, uh, he thought I was skipping his turn. That's, mm -hmm. that's what it was. And uh, I started thinking about it, and I, I realized that I did re-sort uh, re, uh, the initiative, mm -hmm. and there is the possibility that he did get out of initiative order. I did end up giving him the turn anyway, just because I didn't want an argument at the table. Um, but that was a case where I was thinking this players being a little bit annoying, but it, instead of, you know, coming down on him and stuff, I just went ahead and gave him the turn. And then I thought about it later. And I realized, you know, he actually might've been right. He, it, I it, been it's right. funny. And that's a true story. Me and R Rory plays in my group and he was like, wait a minute, I might've been wrong. And then I left it. 
like every good friend would. <laughs> so, I mean, next Sunday, I'm, I'm going to owe that player an apology because I sure. very well may have been wrong, you know? I yeah, mean, and, and that, that happens. DMs make mistakes, too, and uh, I don't want to play with anyone who doesn't realize that that can happen, that, that mm-hmm. I can make a mistake. Um, but also, I wouldn't want to play with a DM who didn't, who didn't acknowledge that they can make mistakes, too. Um, Great. Yep. You know, like that's there's sort of a it's a it's a social game, and uh, in in a, in a lot of ways, um, uh, you just have to be willing to accept that you're going to have different social encounters with people. Um, I I used to be I used to be a lot less uh, I won't say tolerant, but I, I used to have a lot less patient with players who. Um, weren't very socially adept, um, not very emotionally intelligent. They would miss cues or whatever. Um, and I, I kind of got out, got over that when I ran Adventures League for a long time. I ran it for like m- several years here in the Las Vegas area. And I, I you know, taught a lot of dms how to dm and i dealt with a lot of players of varying skill levels in terms of their ability to interact with other people um i dealt i i gamed with and gm'd for people who had math problems i gm'd for people who uh had just a really hard time um picking up on social cues uh possibly due to autism or other neurotypical things or just possibly because they were they were just not well socialized Mm -hmm. um uh, as as individuals and i have to say that over time i i saw like like every person who played in one of our campaigns for a long for you know more than just one or two sessions they you could see them progress you could see them grow as as players and as and as individuals and that's that like watching that happen i was like oh you know what i'm i'm never gonna lose my patience with somebody who has a hard time uh adding you know a d20 plus four when they roll the dice i'm i'm never gonna be i'm never gonna lose my patience on that um i will lose lord knows i felt like a lot of people did in my first uh adventures and and stephanie knows that it's most most of my first public uh appearances were adventures league epics which is like stressful and yeah. and i need to know what what the role is for my heel uh right off the the get the bat and things like that you know it, it, yeah uh Eric, uh, Xander had a question about, um, cause I had mentioned playing homebrew and he wanted to know if the role already games are not AL legal. And, uh, the homebrew game that I was mentioning earlier is my weekly game, uh, that we've been playing since like long before role already was around. So, um, that, that game went homebrew. Um, but Eric can answer more specific to role already games, whether they're AL legal or not. Yep. Real quick. Um, uh, I would say almost every game that we run uh, weekly is uh, AL or Adventures League uh, uh, viable. Um, and we also encourage homebrew. Uh, people enjoy it. There's no reason you can't do both. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yes, we do only play 5th uh, edition. Yep. Although we've talked about, mostly because I've talked about, playing systems, At the that, moment, systems the that aren't even D&D. Because I yep. like other games, um, but uh, we haven't quite done that yet. Um, I I grew up on Pathfinder. Don't don't. <laughs> there's there's no Pathfinder shaming here. There there's no shame in that game. Like especially with all the stuff that Paizo came out with and all the classes and all that stuff. But give, if if you haven't done Five E yet, give it a shot. Especially if you're coming from Pathfinder. Come hang out with us for just a minute. If you don't like it, go go talk smack about me. <laughs> uh, or volunteer to run a Pathfinder game for a role already. I'm sure we would. Uh, hey. hey, yeah, there, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. We wouldn't be say upset no with a Pathfinder. Yeah. No. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. No, come aboard. Come visit the site. Yep. Um, so yeah, you, uh, there are, there are, I think two games that are in, in role already right now that are not AL legal. And one of them is the, is the, um, 
arena that Rory mentioned, and that's basically mm -hmm. a PvP slugger fight. Um, and yes, Xander, you'd be able to take your AL character from from your games at roll already to your local game store, to conventions, to other online Correct. AL games. Yeah, we play one hundred percent above the board. Yep. We are not. Um... God, people hate it when I do that too, because I I totally rules lawyer when uh, for the AL rules when I'm in a game, but. There you go. Um, I, I I know this come, kind of comes out of nowhere, but I gotta sign off. See you guys next time. You thank stream, you I guess. for no, thank you for joining us. For it was awesome to have you. It was very uh, nice meeting you, by the way. Indeed. See you next stream, I guess. I hope so. Thanks. Um, so yeah, uh, um, yeah, you can definitely transfer your characters around. Uh, as far as, um, and this is something that, again, comes up a lot in the suggestions forum. Uh, people want a way to export their characters from Roll20 or print them. We don't actually really have a way to do that at this time. The, the best you can do is, like, you can take your character sheet and just, like, print it from your web browser. But it's not the most elegant thing, and that is in part because... Um, we take advantage of the fact that it's a computer screen and you can scroll it, forever. So there, I mean, there are alternatives and I, I leave that to Stephanie's discretion and they're, I, they're I, legal. It's just a matter of which she endorses. Yeah. I, I, uh, I leave that to, to Eric to talk, um, uh, privately after people have, have joined role already about mm -hmm. how they can import and export from like D and D beyond and stuff. Cause that's not, that's not something I really ever even do. Cause I don't, I don't use D and D beyond. She yells <laughs> at me so much. I do not. I never yell nah. at you. I'm so nice. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm nice. I might not be kind. You are, I'm you nice. are. I'm sorry that you're so mean. I'm so, you're sorry oh. that I'm so mean. Thanks. I didn't say that. You, you said it hey, out loud. We, we, we Wait, were all here. We roll 20. heard you. <clears throat> what was that? I have a question about Roll20. Yeah. Um, so you put this animated guy up there, and yeah. he has stopped animating. Yeah, I, uh, I stopped him. I can start him. Right. Up. Can you show me how I can turn him on and off? Sure. Let me give you control over him. I well, like the question. Assuming I don't have control. Uh, if you don't have control over him and you have, and like the DM has put a bunch of animations out and you're like, oh my God, I need this to stop. Go under the gear icon and okay. go down to enable animated graphics and uncheck it. Ah, interesting. That's just going to shut everything off. It will turn off animated graphics immediately. Right. Okay. So and I can't. Can't do like pick and choose, but I can right. I can turn but into you can one. yeah. Um, and we 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 put that in uh, because I know that there are people who uh, for whom animations can be um, you know they can trigger epilepsy and things, and so we didn't. We're like no no, this needs to be from day one. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to turn them off. So yeah, good choice. Yeah. So it looks like if if I have control of a token, I can turn it on and off. Yep, because you got the but, play and pause button. Um, but if, if I don't, I yeah. just turn everything on and off. Yeah, and if if I have Pick animated it. graphics turned off and you have control over the animated token and you turn it on, I won't see it turn on, of course. Um, and I won't, yeah, so, but yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yep. And, and Fnord, I think that was almost the first time I've ever heard you speak. Say the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy <laughs> Um, all right. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. <laughs> Dude, you got a great radio voice. You really like, do. You read, really can do. you read me a book tonight? <laughs> yeah, I, I would have much rather you read Ready Player One than, uh, than uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so um, are there any other questions about anything we talked about this evening? Um, any uh Rolling dice uh, as a GM, rolling dice on Roll20, setting up layers and maps. Any questions about that? Um, I said, so if you're looking on, on, uh, on, the, on, the work, uh, on the Twitch stream, I said I'd pop over to the marketplace so you can see these. Um, these are like the little previews of 
of some of um, the animations that one of our creators has made. And these are in Meditating Monkey made ASV1 Animation Sensations Volume 1 Traps. So it's just a, just a bunch of traps that, um, that you could put, like you could put these on the GM layer and then, you know, and have them be paused and then move them to the, to the player layer or the token layer. And then, yeah, monkey is fantastic. Um, uh, Xander, I'll get there. I'll get to your question there in a second. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so yeah, like you could drop them and then, and then, you know, when the, when they trigger the trap, you could, you could move it to the, to the token layer and, and have the animation play. And then suddenly there's a saw blade coming at them or whatever it is. So there's, uh, there's some pretty cool, pretty cool animations here. I know there's at least one other token pack that's, that's been put up and there are going to be more coming, uh, over the next, uh, several days and weeks because the, uh, marketplace creators have been working on these for a while. Um, there's a couple of these that don't preview well, like this one that says arrow five by one and 10 by one. And it's because the, the animation is actually like up here. So you can like preview it by holding it right up there at the top. So just a, in case you were wondering, like, oh, where I is that? Why is mean. it blank? Uh, we're working on, on fixing that. So it's not quite so like, like hard to see, but, um, so yeah, there's some, there's some pretty cool stuff out there uh, and more coming all right um so xander asked how do i change the background color of a uh of a page of a map right so <clears throat> let me turn off the fog of war on this because i don't really need it oh i see the color was defaulted to gray um i still don't need the fog of war so it's in the page settings right so to get to the page settings you go look at your page over here and click the year icon that pops up next to the page settings or next to the page. Um, and right. Don't scratch that chair. Right here where it says, where it says background, you can select a background for your map. And if you don't want your grid to be gray, you could change the color, maybe make it hot pink so you can see it. That's super garish, but, but it's there. Um, or make it, I don't know, we'll make it black, make everything black, like that. Um, so yeah, if I just want it to be green because I'm, I'm going to draw a grassy field on there or something, uh, and I can even, I could even freehand that if I wanted to, let's say I wanted, um, in fact, I'll just, I'll say, this is going to be my river. I do this all the time when I'm having to set up a, uh, a map on the fly. Um, which I do quite a lot. And, oh, here's our road that we were just Actually, getting to the Actually, yeah, road. Uh, Stephanie, uh, and New York, uh, brings up a good point. We still see the old map with the, What uh, did I tell icons. you was my, was my, the hardest I'm, thing that I do? I'm really uh, sorry. I'm really sorry. Remember New York, I took the... a bullet. I t thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, so yeah, like I, I'll, I'll draw my maps on the fly a lot. Um, so I might do uh, like this and do a draw shape. Oh, um, so by default, the shapes are, uh, I don't want that. By default, your shape is square. Um, and it will use your player color uh, filled in with uh, transparent, but you can change that. Um, if you want it to be a circle, like I want this to be a tree, uh, you click and hold. Yeah, or you can actually draw a tree. Thank you. Uh, wow. You click and hold the Alt key while you draw. Um, if you want your square to uh, snap to the corner of a grid, you click and hold the Shift key while you draw. I'm kind of embarrassed at how quickly this came together that that we have a map here in like 30 seconds you guys bob ross the heck out of it you know i wait can is there well there's the tree but is, is there a tree for me he always used to put a tree well i mean these are trees that's a tree top down 
Got to okay. use your imagination. Oh, oh, no. Now that's definitely my tree. Right. Uh, also, um, if you're looking at your tree there, and mm -hmm. uh, say you wanted to move the whole thing, right? You <gasps> could select each part. Be gentle. Right. Right click. Go under advanced group. Now. I can move it. Oh, except I seem I'm to have really missed scared. an eye there. I'm scared but... you're going to break my tree. Yes, Fenord, I know the move to tool doesn't work perfectly right now. It's uh, it's it's in the bug list. It's in the known issues now for, for the uh, update this week. But, you know, it's a work in progress. Big complex system like this, uh, you know. Um, and then when I select things by themselves and I can just, you know, yep. So there you go. Um, any other questions? Xander, did that answer your question about how to make the, the grid or the map, uh, different colors? Awesome. I'm glad. Um, obviously, if you wanted it to be, quote, grassy and look like grass, you would want to drag in a map of grass. Uh, and um, I will do that really quick. Do that over here. So let's see. We got free assets here, right? Yeah. OK. Go down here. Um, Mega Maps Basic C Pack. Cool. Look at that. I put the C in here. Oh. I don't want it to come in small like that. So I'm going to. Oh, this is a this is an important thing. Uh, if it's selected as objects and tokens, when you drag it in, it will often drag in as a one by one unless it's been set separately. But if you select map background, then it Stephanie, will. Stephanie, what if I told you there. we couldn't see what you're doing? Really? Oh. Because of it, because of fog of war. Did I mention that that's another thing that I? <laughs> it's it's it, it it has its challenges, but it, it, in the end, its uses ultimately work. Oh, that's neat. I think I may have just crashed fog of war. Well, now I'm upset. Okay. Can you guys see it now? No. Nope. Because Fog of War is still enabled. What am I thinking? There we go. There you go. Right. I'm going to I'm gonna show you guys this again. So I'm going to delete my thing. All right. So say I'm on objects and tokens. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to drag in my C. And it drags in as a little token. It's not what I wanted. So instead, I will put it on the map and background layer. Drag and drop. Uh, this particular tile is, is 3 by 3. Some of them will be different sizes. Probably not in this particular case, but yep. This one gave me some, some waves, rock. So yeah, there we go. And I can just, uh, if I wanted to, I could take this little tile here and just, whoop, wrong tile. And just copy it and paste it over and over. Suddenly, I got, I got a, I got a notion. Look at that. <laughs> Stephanie makes Gilligan's Island in 25 seconds. I'm yeah. just saying. You bet. Let's put a robot in there. There you go. Hey, how long was the tour exactly? It was three hour, but we only, we only took 90 minutes for this. So, you know. <laughs> No, it has to take uh, two hours for Adventure League. 
Yeah, two hours or four, right? So Two or four is usually nice, yeah. And At this point, I think I want to talk about map making. Sure. Uh, I don't know if this is still the case, but it used to be the case that Roll20 would tell you not to make maps the way you're doing. With uh, uh, you're copy and paste? Well, no, with multiple images. Mm. Um, you're put, putting a bunch of separate tiles down. I absolutely am. It's totally the wrong way to do it. Right. And we, that's because it used right to lag. It And it would lag if this were, um, if this game had more than like, I, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 10 pages in this game and most of them have like one image on them. So you're absolutely right. This would lag if it were like Storm King's Thunder and I were... And I and I were doing this over and over again. Uh, it's one of the reasons Tomb of Annihilation uh, is is uh, such a, a big load um, because the player map is that gigantic map of Cholt, and every single hex has a has a, a shape on it to uh, cover mm -hmm. up the hex. So yes, that 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 is correct. Like, do not do it this way if you have like a a big, you know, a, a big campaign. Um, another way to do it would be to just resize it like that. Um, but then you I'm see it's a little a blurry. Link in the Roll20 here for GIMP, which is a graphics manipulation program. Uh, similar to Photoshop, it's got a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but, but it's free and open source. Exactly. And it's and awesome. The, the preferred method is to make the large background map using GIMP, using various multiple pieces, and then paste it all together into one single image. Mm -hmm. But then you would want, for example, the rowboat would be a separate image on your map layer here. So you'd make like all the water and the islands and everything in GIMP. But since the rowboat's something that might move around, you'd want to bring that in separately. Right. Well, one thing I could recommend, and, and I actually did this with my arena map. The arena map has, well, I don't even know, like like hun literally hundreds of, of uh, separate tokens that I've just shaped and, you know, molded into walls and different things, you know. Um, but what I did is, in order to make it better, is I, I basically, uh, there's a program that we use called LightShot. Um that will allow you open to open source, and it is yeah, it is open source, and and it allow you to um, to take that 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 image there and then make it a bigger image of it. So I actually broke the arena down into six parts, so that I can trade it to somebody, I can get it to other folks, and they can um, you know resize it into the correct map, and it's only six parts instead of being yeah. hundreds of parts. Um, so, uh, Xander asked if there are pre-existing grids and maps for popular campaigns, or do you normally draw them myself? Um, as I mentioned, uh, some of them I've dragged in from, uh, from like, if I have a, a module that, that I bought on, like, drive through that came with a map. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, I, and, and if you, if you've bought any of the modules on Roll20, um, the maps are all included, and they're already set up, like, completely set up they have the yeah. tokens where they need them they've got everything um i got a mad mage going right now that yeah so i have no business running <laughs> it, unless I, I bought this mod it's totally <laughs> worth buying buying the mod so and everyone buying it on so the, yeah and xander you asked you asked about curse of strahd curse of strahd is available on the marketplace for roll 20 um all of our all of our like D, D modules that that are conversions from the the wizards of the coast products they're a little pricey but um i like the work that has gone into them is is well worth it in my opinion i challenge um, you to put the time <laughs> versus sure. the and there, cost. but there are people I who challenge. yeah there are people who have uh who have because they bought the book and they um and they they don't you know they don't have extra money for for the module on D, D. if you have if you have more time than money like sure go ahead uh and they've scanned in things and they'll They'll, you know, post them in and they'll, they'll, you know, scan their maps and put them in or they'll recreate their maps 
uh, using the drawing tools or using GIMP or using uh, other sources that they've got. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's not really something that's done by the community and, and, uh, and distributed because that would be a copyright violation, right? To distribute it that way. But if you did it for yourself, like, like we're certainly not going to stop you from doing that yourself because that's, that's, you bought the book already and that's your fair use of like making it available for yourself and for your group. Um, but it's also available uh, in the marketplace. So like, uh, let's see here, search for Wizards of the Coast, search, um, yeah, uh, Mega Dungeon like Mad Mage, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so here's here's everything that uh, that we've put out for wizards, uh, and do, 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 if you keep going, like the dungeon tiles re reincarnated are are slick. Um, and here's Curse of Strahd, and it's fifty bucks. It's you know, like I said, it if if what you have is a lot of time and fifty bucks is is a big hit, and your players don't want to help pay for it or whatever, um, you know that like I certainly understand that. Um, I, I've, I've, I've been a broke gamer too, you know, uh, but, uh, but if you do buy it, it's like, it's super slick and just, it's all set up. Um, like the dynamic lighting even is set up. So if you, if you're a pro user or if you become a pro user while you're running it, the dynamic lighting is just already there. Um, you know, every, Every map, all of the tokens are already there. All of the monsters that have unique abilities or unique stats are already statted out. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Also, um, if you can't afford the whole thing, you can always buy like a part of it too. Uh, depending on the module, yeah. I think Curse, Curse of Strahd, Strahd has maybe. maps, yeah. Uh, has the, the map pack available, um, but, but not all of them have that as, a, as an option. Right, like Castle Ravenloft is a map pack for Curse of Strahd. Right, that's available, yeah. or you could buy the the Taroka deck uh, separately if you just needed that part. Um, yep. I think I think maybe next time I do one of these, I'll talk a little bit about uh, card decks uh, too, because those are kind of cool. So, one thing that uh, I would like to uh, suggest is, uh, especially for the Adventures League people. Um, uh, there are other websites and things like that that offer uh, CCC content mm -hmm. as an option. And uh, for anybody who's not aware of that, that's content uh, or excuse me, convention created content. Um, I, we, I mean, we were built off of that. Mm -hmm. And it, if that's something that can eventually become available, I, I, I mean, I don't know what the benefit would be to Rule Twenty. Uh, directly, but so I know that you're asking if Roll Twenty might ever uh, sell CCCs. Uh, in co in co you know in the works of the the content creators themselves. Yes, yeah, so uh, we actually can't, and that's not because we don't want to. Um, okay. The uh, the agreement for CCCs and other things that are on DMs Guild, to my knowledge, I don't know if this has changed, but the last I checked. The mm -hmm. agreement was that um, if it's on D, if it's if it's uh, Adventures League content like DDALs or or CCCs, they are restricted to being sold on DMs Guild. Uh, no, I think you're correct, and yeah, that makes sense. Yep. So, um, it, like, Roll Twenty doesn't have a problem with it, but uh, but the Adventures League has made that as. Uh, they, I guess they just, they only want their things sold there for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So no, makes sense. Totally makes, you know, like that's, that's their prerogative and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a copyright issue. You know, it's, it's cool. I, I'm not, um, I don't second guess their choices on that. That's, that's their choice to make. Uh, I'm glad that they often, that the, the authors often, put the maps into the pack that's on drive through as uh as separate graphics because then i can import them into into roll 20 
uh, and that that makes it a little easier for me so very cool all right well uh, we are definitely <laughs> over time because yeah i was gonna say i have work yeah because it's uh it's almost 7 45 and i was planning this to be a 90 minute thing so thank you all for being here thank you all for participating uh i hope you learned a lot and i i really appreciate um uh your your presence and your participation and your thoughtful comments and questions um i do these i don't know roughly once a month or so um so i will uh you know when when i do the next one i'll post it in the in the game if you joined the game i'll put it up as a pickup group and of course it will be on rollalready.com in the forums so uh go go ahead and and join join our group see what we're about uh, if you're a new GM, we offer a lot of support for new GMs. Uh, I know that that is a that is a big initiative for Eric, and it's been a very successful one. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for for being here. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.